A warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 23rd of July. Now, I want to give an update on what's going on globally with excess deaths and the causes of these excess deaths to some extent. Now, we've been doing quite a lot on this channel lately. We've been hearing from pretty high calibre people around the world. Senator uh, Gerard Rennick in Australia reporting on Australian excess deaths. Uh, this is Dr. Vibeka Manneke reporting on the excess deaths in uh, Denmark. And there's no question this is a global phenomena at the moment. Let's just listen briefly to uh, Mr. Andrew Bridgen, who is a member of parliament in the United Kingdom, literally about a 30 second clip. Uh, it's, it's a very regrettable state of affairs. But a as you know, I mean, coming back to the, to the issue of, of vaccine harms, it's not just vaccine harms. We can't even have a debate in the mother of all parliaments about excess deaths. We can't have a debate about the excess deaths. Last week's figures were 2,540, according to the ONS, excess deaths. That's 22.1% above the rolling five-year average. And in the mother of all parliaments, we can't have a debate about it. Those are issues that affect every community in every constituency. And there's only me asking for the debate. There's something gone seriously wrong in our democracy. And of course, this is what is bemusing about this, the great silence from around the world we're not hearing about it from politicians we're not hearing about it from uh, election candidates with the possible exception of robert kennedy actually but basically this is a bit of a silence now what's the latest situation in the uk a bit out of date on the data now but it was 2.9 percent above the average for the week ending the 7th of july and let's put this in some sort of context now as we want to look at some various data sets from around the world so this was the latest figures from the United Kingdom, from the Office of National Statistics. So we see that the excess deaths in this latest week are actually the lowest they've been for quite some time. But let's hope that this is the start of a new trend. But we have hoped that to be for. Now we've got more data here from the Office for uh, Health Improvements in the United Kingdom again. Now this is the weekly excess death rates uh, for all age groups. And we can see that this remains high even into 2023. We know it's been high over 2022. There were peaks in the pandemic years, of course. But the concerning thing is this is not going down to baseline levels as of yet. It's still higher than we would like it to be well into 2023. Now, this actually helps us. Uh, this site will actually help us to break it down into different age groups as well. Now, here we see the 0 to 24 year olds. Now, thankfully, the scale is less because less of these people die. But as a percentage, it's still higher. Now, through the pandemic years, less in this age group were dying. So we see that in the, uh, the sort of 20 to 24 year old age range, um, they were uh, lower chances of dying during the pandemic this is presumably because of restrictions on the behavior they weren't being involved in accidents and such things as that but now sadly we see that their excess deaths is higher than we would expect so anything above the line is positive and we see that there are many positive weeks in this uh, age group not to 24 and here we see a bit of a blow up of that over the past few weeks sadly we're seeing only a few weeks when it's below average the majority when the deaths are above average. No question we're seeing some excess deaths in these young, very young people. Now, this one is the 25 to 49 year old age range. And again, we're seeing excess deaths in the pandemic, as we would expect to some extent in this age group. But again, all throughout 2022, or a lot of 2022 and into 2023, we're still seeing more above the line then we're seeing beneath it there is still excess deaths in this uh, in this age group unfortunately um, so it's not restricted to any one age band uh, ages 50 to 64 well again i'm afraid we see more in the pandemic years but we see that this is still high all the way through i mean from from what um, early 2022 all the way through to the present day there hasn't been a week where there's been a below average figure. It's been above average all the way through. All these are more deaths than we would expect in the 50 to 64 year old age range. Um, now, 
The other thing about the Office of Health Improvements, it gives deaths by specific causes of death. And I really think there's quite a lot to be learned from this. And why epidemiologists aren't jumping on this all over the place, I have no idea. But we're hearing very little from them. But let's look at it now. Now, this is deaths from um, this is ischemic heart disease. So poor blood supply to the myocardium. And again, I'm afraid we're seeing that these are quite a long way above average. Um, hundreds of deaths, thousands of deaths, all the way through, again, going up to the present time at the moment where these are still higher uh, from ischemic heart disease. Now, this is cerebrovascular disease. So ischemic heart disease is disease of the heart muscle, not enough blood getting to the heart muscle. Cerebrovascular disease, the cerebrum, the brain, strokes and things like that um, causing death. And again, we see these are above uh, what we would expect. Now, these are interesting because these, of course, are vascular. This is essentially diseases of the arterial system. But then when we look at heart failure, we see quite a, a dramatic increase, really. And this dramatic increase has been sustained over long periods of time. Now, again, we're getting the odd week where the numbers are lower than we would expect. But basically, they're higher all the way through up until the present time. Now, this is heart failure. Now, heart failure is when the myocardium, the heart muscle, can't contract enough to generate sufficient blood, sufficient cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands of the body. And as well as that, there's a backlog of blood. So we see there's a lot of people with failing myocardiums, a lot of heart failure uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, in fact, no, sorry, this is just English data, actually. But of course, that's the majority of the population. So heart failure, a big cause of death. Now... Post-pandemic, we might expect to see a lot of chronic respiratory diseases. So it's not surprising if you have acute respiratory infections that these cause uh, some ongoing respiratory problems. For example, if we had respiratory scarring or something like that. But what we're actually seeing here, uh, chronic low respiratory diseases in England, we're actually seeing that there's periods where the deaths are quite a bit below average and periods where they're a bit above average. Now, it's not a typical pattern, but again, here we're seeing quite a lot of uh, deaths uh, weeks below average. So we're actually not seeing more people dying of chronic respiratory diseases, as we might expect if this, this was largely respiratory COVID sequelae, complications of COVID infection. Now, here we see uh, other respiratory diseases. And again, here it's even more pronounced. We're seeing way less people die of other respiratory diseases than we would expect. So throughout the pandemic, less period uh, people, less period people dying of respiratory diseases. We see that from 2020, 2021 on into 2022 and into 2023. Again, uh, many less people than we would expect dying of uh, other respiratory diseases. Um, you see, this isn't quite fitting with the, uh, the the pandemic picture. There's other factors involved here. Now, dementia and Alzheimer's disease, um, people less people dying of this, as we see here. So quite a lot less dying of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Now, in a sense, this is to be expected because a lot of the people that would have gone on to get dementia and Alzheimer's disease have died during the pandemic from one thing or, or another. And... Uh, Old people, there's basically less old, you know, pe people are dying before before old age. So it's not surprising that we would, uh, we would see less uh, Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Uh, but when we look at cirrhosis and other liver diseases, we see that they're greatly higher than normal. So we see a big excess above what we would expect. This is, this is the 23 data here. So in 2022, there was more. In 2023, uh, there's even more excess deaths, as we see here, from um, cirrhosis and other liver diseases. Now, cirrhosis is a scar tissue in the liver um, due to chronic inflammatory processes. So what is going on in livers? Why, why are more people getting dying of, of, of liver disease? Um, Again, very hard to explain in terms of COVID, but we do see this is going on well into 2023. Liver disease. Now, this is a diabetes. We do see some increase in diabetes, not that dramatic. Does seem to be going down deaths from diabetes, but um, 
because diabetes very often causes deaths through other things such as ischemic heart disease. Now, the point is, all this causes of death data is just sitting there waiting for international analysis, but it's not really happening. Now, is this just a UK English problem? Certainly not. Let's look at some data from around the world briefly. So this is from the, um, this is from the United States. So we see that what we would expect is this darker line here. What we actually got was this blue line here. So we see excess deaths, as you would expect during the pandemic. Data sort of peters out in the United States. So we haven't got much data looking promising just there with less deaths than projected. But all this time here, all this period of time here, which corresponds to um, this is the time period, which is uh, 20. Basically, this is 2022. We're seeing an excess of deaths throughout 2022, although in 2023 it's looking better. Uh, let's hope for the best for the remainder of 2023. But even if deaths do go below average in 2023, these 2022 deaths in the United States here, um, this excess here of the light blue line above the black line demands an explanation. This is Australia. And again, uh, 2022, um, 2021, we looked at the excess deaths with Sandy Serenic in 2021 there. Uh, we see in 2022, the gap is much bigger, much bigger. And going on into later data, into late 2022, so this is late 2022 in Australia, we're still seeing uh, quite a lot of uh, excess deaths, more than we would expect on the projections. Um, this is Canada. Again, looking at data for primarily from 2022, we see this same pattern. We're seeing a, a, an uncannily similar pattern of excess deaths in countries with completely different uh, health services, completely different um, uh, ge geographies. Ge just ge we would expect these countries to be. What? Why is it that we're getting the same pattern of excess deaths in all these countries? That's that, that's basically the question. Here we're seeing the excess deaths. Here we're seeing, and this is relating to periods of what. 2021, but in 2022 we certainly shouldn't be seeing them because we're well into Omicron eras. And yet in Canada, there they are. Uh, and Canada, again, data peters out. It is looking promising in Canada here. Now, this picture in Canada here where the actual deaths are less than projected is what we would expect to see uh, everywhere. Because people that were going to die in 2022 very often died in 2020 as a result of the, the pandemic. Again, let's hope this data continues downwards in Canada, but we've run out of data for Canada, unfortunately. Ireland, again, very similar pattern, 2022 excess deaths and we've got this big spike here in Ireland what, what, what date is that that's that that date is um so that's uh sort of late 2022 I don't know why there's that big spike in Ireland it's certainly not COVID related uh, but a big spike in the deaths in Ireland there way above what would be expected uh, many many standard deviations above what would be expected this is the Netherlands and again quite a similar picture um, we're seeing that the excess deaths here are quite a bit above the projected deaths and continue, unfortunately, into the, uh, this is the uh, 2023, well, yeah, in, 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 into, into uh, that, that, that's 31st of December 2022, obviously, uh, but excess deaths do seem to be continuing. No, we can't say about 2023 yet from that data from the Netherlands, 2022, certainly. New Zealand, again, 2022 is higher. Again, pandemic years in New Zealand. Okay, the pandemic was late in New Zealand. But in 2021, when the pandemic was in Australia, in New Zealand, well, I can't say we're really seeing excess deaths there. In fact, in the pandemic year, the main pandemic year in New Zealand, which was 2021, we're seeing deaths below the projected amount. Can you see this isn't quite sort of not quite hanging together really, is it? And yet the excess deaths in 2022 in New Zealand were higher. So um, some interesting patterns there. Not hearing much about it. Uh, I'm going to leave the, the last word to Andrew Bridge in just a one minute clip about asking to get an official debate in the British uh, Parliament. Let's uh, see what response he gets. Andrew Bridge. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since mid-2022, we've been suffering from excess deaths in the UK. So far this year, we've been seeing around 8% excess mortality. On a weekly basis, that means around 950 of our constituents are passing away each week more than the five-year average. I've been requesting a debate on this matter uh, regularly for the last six months to no avail. I can understand why the government don't wish to debate this topic, but the silence from the opposition parties is perplexing. So could I ask the Leader of the House, when will the public get a, an opportunity to witness a debate in this House on this issue of life and death that's affecting them, their friends and their families? Um, well, I'm sorry that um, my, uh, my honourable friend has not been able to secure a debate on this matter. Um, uh, I think, I mean, again, he is sat next to the chairman of the Backbench Business Committee, who is forever announcing opportunities to secure a debate. Um, perhaps if he would write to me in more detail about what he has done to secure a debate, um, I can advise him and assist him further. So I must say I agree completely with Mr Bridge in there. It's not surprising that the government want to hush things up because if there was excess deaths, well, there is excess deaths during their watch, could this be related to a government uh, policy, for example, that they wouldn't want to own up to? Um, so it's not surprising that we're getting silence from the government. But what about the opposition? Their job is to hold the government to account and they are completely failing in their duty to do so. So we're not hearing shouts from the Labour Party, from the Liberal Democrat Party, from the Scottish National Party. Why aren't these bouncing up and down, grabbing the government metaphorically by the throat and saying, explain these excess deaths in our people? That's what opposition parties are for. And yet we're simply not getting that. So good to know that we've got some good people who are shouting out for their constituents. Senator Rennick that we interviewed, many leading academics and doctors, of course, around the world. Uh, but but uh, sadly, few people in the United Kingdom. But you and I are, so if the government's listening, let's have that debate on excess deaths as soon as possible. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you for watching. <laughs>